Chapter 28. I sprinted as fast as I could through the submarine, but I couldn't move very fast. Given the tight surroundings, I had to be careful not to bang my head into anything. Jennifer was right behind me. I could hear the roar of the engines, but the sound was being drowned out by the thundering of water gushing into the control room. We reached the ladder. I grabbed the steel rungs and scrambled up like a frantic squirrel. What's going on, Landon asked. The Megalodon splashed, uh, smashed the glass portal. Water's coming in and the sub is going to sink. We have to abandon ship. As I reached the open hatch and looked out, I could already see that the submarine was sinking lower in the water. Water was about to begin pouring in the hatch. But I also saw something else. The boat Tara had spoken of. Landon was waving his arms like a crazed windmill trying to get the attention of whoever was on board and appeared that someone must have spotted us because the boat was headed in our direction. Jennifer emerged from the hatch and the four of us stood there watching the water and the approaching boat in the distance. There was no sign of the Megalodon. We have to jump in and swim away from the submarine. Why can't we just wait here? Maybe that boat will get here before the sub sinks. It's too risky. We don't have any other choice. If the sub sinks while we're on it, it will create a vacuum in the water that will pull us all down with it. The force will be so strong we won't be able to swim away. We'll be dragged down to the bottom of the lake right along with the sinking submarine. But that, that thing is out there. He could swallow us all in one bite. I did not want to jump into the lake, certainly not with the megalodon around, but like Jennifer said, we really didn't have any other choice. Lake water began pouring in and down the hatch. Come on, everybody in the water. The sub is going to go down fast. She grabbed my wrist with her left hand. Tara grabbed Landon's. On three, one, two, three. The four of us leaped from the hatch and plunged into the water. Just before we hit the surface, I had a horrifying vision of the Megalodon coming up out of the water at that instant. His hungry mouth open, ready to catch all four of us in his razor sharp teeth. Thankfully, it was only my imagination. We went beneath the surface for only a moment and then popped back up. Swim away from the sub, Jennifer said. It's starting to go down. She had no sooner said those words than the submarine's hatch vanished beneath the surface with a blast of hissing air and loud gushing gurgling. I began to swim and I could actually feel the suction of the water as I tried to pull me down with the sub. In the distance, the boat turned toward us. I could see the shadow of a man in the cabin piloting the craft. Keep swimming, keep swimming, and let's all keep together. The four of us crawled through the water. Once again, I wished I had my swim trunks on. It was difficult to swim in all my clothing. I would be able to swim a lot faster without my pants and shirt clinging to me. My shoes felt heavy too. Then Landon let out a horrifying shriek. Behind us, that thing is coming. I turned only to see the giant fin in the distance cutting through the water like a blade of a knife. Question was, who was going to get to us first? The boat or the Megalodon? 29. Seeing the fin behind us, even though it was some distance away, gave me a tremendous burst of energy. I crawled through the water, curling my arms forward and down and kicking with my legs. My clothing seemed to slow me down again. Ahead, the boat was still forging toward us. I could see the dark shadow. I didn't see anyone else on the boat. Behind us, the gigantic megalodon was quickly approaching. His fin was larger than ever, towering into the sky. The boat slowed as it drew near. Hurry, swim closer and grab my hand. The boat was still a few feet away, but the four of us swam to it and reached at the same time. Tara was first. The man grabbed her hand and pulled her out of the water. Jennifer was next, then landed. I was yanked up with such force that I thought the guy was going to take my arm off. We stood on the boat dripping wet. Although I could see only the fin of the huge shark, I knew that his head was a lot closer. While we watched, the giant fin turned and began circling, but we kept a good distance for now. You saved us, Landon said to the man. This is unbelievable. That was a real live shark. Not just any shark, a megalodon. How it got here, I'm not sure, but we have to get to safety. We're still in danger, even though we're in your boat. That thing could easily capsize us. Everybody hang on, we're getting out of here. I grabbed the boat's railing with both hands just as the engines began to roar and the vessel started to turn. Not far away, the megalodon spin was now coming toward us and I was certain, given the size of the fish, his snout must be close to the boat. No matter, I was sure the boat was faster than the giant shark. The boat had already started to move. Finally, our nightmare was coming to an end. Suddenly, there was an enormous jolt that shook the entire boat, nearly knocking me overboard. If I hadn't had a good grip on the railing, I would have been sent sailing into the lake. 
Landon fell to the deck and Tara was nearly knocked to the railing too. Then there was an eerie silence. That thing bit us. He bit the boat. I pointed toward the back of the boat. Not only that, he chewed off the boat engine. He ripped it right off the back of the boat. At the stern, there was a gaping hole where the motor had been. The Megalodon had ripped the entire engine from the boat. A good thing that the boat was leak wasn't leaking water. The bad thing was the Megalodon's fin suddenly popped back up. This just gets worse and worse. We'll make it. Someone will come to rescue us. Sure, I didn't really believe it myself. Things were about as bad as they could get. The man emerged from the cabin, followed by Jennifer. We were all silent as the enormous fin continued circling the boat. Without a motor, there was no way for us to escape. And with every passing second, the Megalodon circled closer and closer and closer. Chapter 30. As the Megalodon circled the boat, I saw something that made my spirit sleep. The man who'd rescued us had a phone. He had already dialed and was holding it to his ear. We have an emergency. We're in Sardis Lake and there's a giant shark attacking us. He paused for a moment. No, this isn't a joke. We can't believe it either. We need help. There really is a giant shark attacking us. Jennifer shook her head. He's going to have a hard time convincing anyone that we're being attacked by a megalodon. For our sake, I hope he can. We really need some help. I don't want to be shark bait. The man with the cell phone continued talking, trying to convince the emergency operator that he wasn't joking. Finally, he finished speaking and put the phone in his pocket. During this time, the megalodon's fin sank into the water. In the distance, we could see a few more boats venturing out into the lake. I think they're going to send a helicopter, he said. It took some time to convince them that we really do have an emergency out here. How did you know to come and help us? I was headed out to fish. I saw what I thought was a submarine, which made me curious. Never seen a sub in Sardis Lake before. Anyway, I saw you guys come out of the hatch, and it looked like you were in trouble. Then I saw the fin. Craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. Us too. By now, most of the fog had lifted. The sun was rising into the cloudless blue. Jennifer walked over to the cabin and ducked inside. I sure hope that helicopter gets here fast. That thing could attack this boat at any minute. We nervously looked around the lake, expecting to see the enormous fin rise up out of the water. Maybe the Megalodon will go after someone else. Let's hope so. I mean, I don't want anyone else to get hurt, but I hope that thing leaves us alone. Maybe he got bored, Tara said. Soon, we heard a low, deep drone in the distance. There it is, look! Landon shot his arm up. Low in the sky and far away from, a dark, from us was a dark dot. The sound grew louder. The helicopter! Jennifer and the man emerged from the boat's cabin. We all watched the helicopter as it flew low over the lake. Once again, I was filled with hope that we were going to be rescued. After all we had been through, our ordeal was over. Almost. We thought the Megalodon had gone somewhere else but he was only waiting for another chance to get us. <laughs>